Yeah, when, when the grenades are close to your own backyard, it gives you a renewed sense of um, priority and commitment. Um, I mean, by contrast, shamefully, Canada announced in the last few days or last couple of days that they won't be uh, ponying up. They're not going to do their 2%. Um, why? Well, talk about riding on America's coattails. They have, the, you know, they have the safety and security of being on our border and not having to worry about that. I think that's shameful. I, I think if, if you're going to be a, a member nation and participant, you need to do your part. Um, some have a greater sense of urgency about that, clearly, uh, because the threat is at their own back door. But here's the, here's the reality. If we don't stop it there, it will come here. There's no guarantee. We, we live under this false assumption or, or you know, false sense of security that we would never have a war on our own shores. But, but the big moment Justin Trudeau was not looking forward to has arrived. It's time for another NATO summit, and this time it's taking place in the U.S., Mike Johnson has made a point of shaming Trudeau and, by proxy, Canada into facing up to its lack of commitment to NATO's spending requirements. Our nation's leader is in the belly of the beast, and he's feeling the pressure. How does he skate his way out of this one? You know how. By channeling the ninth grade drama teacher version of Justin Trudeau and pumping out a word salad that's rich in fire and brimstone. NATO is the strongest military alliance in the world. And to keep it that way, we must continue to step up individually and collectively to strengthen both our alliance and the collective peace it represents and protects. Canada stands with our NATO allies. Canada will always defend the values of democracy, freedom, and the rule of law, as it is more important today than it has ever has been. My friends, we must be clear-eyed about the current state of global affairs. The long peace after the Second World War is over. We're living in an increasingly dangerous, unstable, and complex world. Cyber warfare, resurgent authoritarian forces, expanding regional conflicts, and everywhere increasing impacts of climate change all represent growing threats to our collective security and our continued prosperity. This is the sobering reality we must all face. That's why Canada- The best part about that speech? It's how Trudeau weaves climate change into the fabric of NATO's mission and making heat waves sound like an equal or greater threat to humanity than a nuclear holocaust. We all know Trudeau for who he is by now, but for him to have that self-righteous audacity to put the issue he hopes to make his legacy at the forefront of security discussions, it's pretty next level. For contrast, part of Trudeau's speech was meant to announce the opening of a research hub in Montreal that is meant to measure how climate change affects the security of NATO Alliance members. What's nice about this is that Canadians no longer have to feel alone about Trudeau's gaslighting. A quarter of our population can't afford housing, food, or gas, and yet Trudeau would have us believe climate change is a greater threat than not being able to meet life's basic necessities. And now, he's doing it to the entire world by way of the NATO summit. He's looking directly into the camera and attempting to gaslight our partners into believing our spending on climate change initiatives is infinitely more pressing and noble than meeting our national security dues. The US isn't alone in admonishing Canada. Estonia's defense minister had this to say, when you have club rules, then you respect the rules and you expect that everyone will also respect the rules. Want to hear the most ironic part of this whole mess? One of the reasons Canada is struggling to move forward with meeting its target of 2% of GDP is, you'll never believe this, because Christopher Freeland is actively working to rein in spending. Yes, you actually heard that correctly. With the next federal election coming due in 2025, it's now that Freeland was suddenly struck with the epiphany that our government needs to be more prudent with the public purse. Part of her plan includes a pledge to keep the federal deficit below $40 billion this year and to cap it at 1% of GDP starting in 2026. So how do you feel about Canada's continued failure to meet its NATO requirements? Is it something that bothers you deeply or are you someone indifferent to it? Leave your opinion in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing.